Um, all right, ready? Yeah. Are you started filming already? Yeah. yeah. Typical. Okay, here's how to tie for a great knot. And we're today with Abby. <laughs> Show Abby, smile at the camera Hello. from Australia, <laughs> and Ellen. So, right. Okay, zoom in so you can see. All right. So, this is how to tie two pieces of wire together. So, the first thing you do is you make a kink. So, I grab it with, you know, sort of like one hand breadth and go like that. And then I make a kink with, and using my, okay, so you made a little kink like that. And, and using my thumb to push it across is a good way to make that sort of neat. And the idea then is, so there's two ways up this could be. This, so I've got the this bit on top, so don't be like this, you know, put it like that so it's on top. Then you bring the new bit up out of here and kind of over the top of this, so you, you know it's, okay, now it gets hard to explain, but you go then, no, and then wait, wait, I have to wait, turn wait, around wait, Abby. Wait, wait, hang on, I gotta, gotta, gotta look, oops, sorry. So see how that's, that's come out from underneath and gone over the top of this one, and then it's going to go round the back of this, and in there, and but before I, the easiest way to do it is to do a kink this way now. So do it that, then use my thumb and push that across like that, and then I can feed it in there and then put that bit in there. And so when I pull it together, the both ends are kind of well, you know, sort of looks neat. If you know what I mean, like both both ends are going underneath there and over there. Mm -hmm. And then as you pull that tight, it will go into a figure of eight. Easy peasy, Japanesey. Go. Go. Go, all right. Okay, so I'll tag this onto the back of the how to tie figure eight, how to use wire strainers. These are wire strainers, and this is how you use them. So we've got this wire now, which we want to make straight between these two posts. So Abby's going to hold it. It's very nice to have assistance, but all right, there's all different ways that this is the way I'll do it. So you wrap this bit around the post, like that. Um, and they go like this one. Then you, now see these have got this little thingy like that. So I like to, so nice with every deck, because you can just, you know, you put that on there. Can I see that a little bit better? What? I need to see that better. Okay, there. It's yeah. got this grippy thing. I'll let Where's it go. the grippy thing? In here, so the wire's going in there. I should redo it this way up so you can see it. Mm -hmm. All right. But I actually, okay, so see how that goes on and then grips? Mm -hmm. And it'll, You've got to sort of give it a <clears throat> to give it a kink. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. Then, oh, well, I dropped this now. This is not going to kick anything either. All right. So then, the key too, of course, is to figure out how far down the wire you do, you know join this thing on. I can, I can let that go. All right. So then you hook it, and then you see the little. Um, jaws, grab the wire, this chain, and then pull it tight. Now, we've got a pretty short strain, like you know, it's only 50 meters long. So, if um, if we pull, and also we're pretty Mickey Mouse posts and everything. If we pull too tight, we'll probably snap that post at the other end. This is just electric fence, so it doesn't need to be super duper um, tight. So now, just to finish off. We need to finish, this is going to be electric fence, so we need to tie the, this, I call those the eggs, end strain insulators. And we've got to tie that off. So who's got the wire cutters? Um, okay, so we'll just, oh, actually, sure. because I want to use this again. So I think you might have the wire cutters in your pocket. I think I do. I actually like these ones better than those ones. Oh, don't give my wrist such a shock. So I'll just cut this up, throw that on the ground for a cow to eat. No, you never do that. But, um, okay, so now I had to tie off an uh, egg, an end strain insulator. So the thing is, uh, so you've got to figure out where you want it to end. So I kind of want it to end about here. So then everything with <coughs> wire is about making kinks. So I make a kink like that. And then, uh, well then, this is actually hard. Um, it's hard if you don't have very strong wrists <laughs> because it is actually quite difficult to tie this around here, but the idea is you just twist it around. Um, so it's, and it's good if you do it in like, you know, little bits at a time, like half a turn each time. 
then you can make it quite easy. Do you want to have a go at doing this? Is it good? No, okay. It is actually, you know, like that's looking quite neat, you know. Um, when you start, it looks real ugly normally because you kind of, you muck it up. But after a while, you get this hang of like just doing, you know, a little bit each time. And then, you know, then it's kind of, if you, if you try and go, and then it goes really ugly. All right, so that's kind of good. And now we have to do a termination knot, I think is the correct word. Oh, my, what is I need a bit of wire. Trying to film me doing stupid things. Okay, so now what we do now, the knot to tie a piece of wire around a post is called termination knot. So I'll just get rid of this bit. I'm going to pick these little bits up later, but I'm just I'm in a hurry now. So you, you typically when you film things, I've kind of stuffed it up, but. What I, you know, I'm going to go around this post and I have to figure out, do I want the wire to go around the post and sort of come off on this side or that side or kind of in the middle? Now, because I'm trying to dodge all that gorse here, I'm actually, I want the wire to come off on, on um, come down out this way. So what you do, you go around like this. Wire's always got a, a natural kind of curl in it like that. So if you start trying to work with it upside down, you know, it, it, it's, you're pushing shit uphill all the time. So work with the curve. So you go around the post like that and then you make another kink. So you put it through here and make a kink like that. Okay. Then you just push that up till you get wherever you want it. Now to be honest I don't want this we're not in a fencing competition and I actually kind of on all this horse we're not gonna make everything really tight. I quite like to make these knots so that you can sort of undo them if you wanted to in the future. And the idea is that you go around and you instead of, you don't go like this and wrap it around like that because it's not locking it properly. So you got to go like this. So you have the wires come under, over the top, and then under again. And okay, I'll show you how to do it properly. So then you the wires kind of like that's the tension there. So now I make a handle, which is go like this. Okay, and then you go. You see your handle? Oh. Yeah. Okay, and then. Same again, do half turns each time. So you reach under there and do another one. And like that. So nice. just like that. It's kind of quite, I'm happy with that actually, went quite good. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I mean, it's good because you'll be watching this, of course, when you're trying to do this in the future. Oh, how do you do that? And then what you do, if you're real smart, is you turn the handle 90 degrees, go like that, and go. Oh, actually, this isn't going to work very good. I think. Uh, and it snaps off very neatly. That's pretty magic, isn't it? <laughs> I don't think it's going to work. All right. Okay, so <laughs> now we've got to tie this to that. Oh, shit. Maybe I'll be a little bit short, haven't I? Get him on. <laughs> um, okay, so you cut this. I'd like a dollar for every time I've cut something too short. And, um, why, do you, why do you want to cut it? Okay. okay, so now we've got to join these two. Now, see how this knot, the termination knot, is kind of sort of a locky kind of knot? You know, it went around and like that. But whereas the, the knot around the egg is actually just a twisty knot. So so then you've got to... Oh, and with the egg, it's important to see the egg has a long side and a short side. So the long side is obviously the strain. So you see, when we, we're going to pull this way. So that's that wire goes through on the long side. And this wire is going to go through on the long side. It would be a mistake to put the wire through and come around on the short side and this one on the short side because then if you think about it the egg could would, could snap in half and, you know but it's this way even if the egg disintegrated the um the two wires would still actually be joined together in a loop oh. they of course they wouldn't be insulated anymore because the plastic would be no. down so, that's, all right so good, but... same again see how the wires kind of you know it's got a bit of a curve like this so, you know, don't try and tie like, go like that. Push it, go through the, the egg like that. Okay, make a kink. 
and then and now see see that there's the tension like that so now i'd make my handle and then uh, now the trouble is now that the chain is in the road so i'm just going to um feed this I'll probably make this up a bit to get my handle through and then i'll do another one and that actually will will hold this so i'll, I'll now release my wire strainers so they just work backwards and now i can just finish this i can see like that and just to show you that thing again so there's there's handle like that so then i twist this around to be like that and then this is the hard bit kind of kind of like then just go over the top and it snaps off <laughs> yeah, never done it so neatly all right job done oh and this is ju just one wire at the moment okay because we're in a hurry um if we were going to do two wires then this would be hot near the top and so we have on this farm my rule of thumb is the the bottom wire is knee height and the top is the top of the post which is kind of at your hip <sighs> cut what is it now What's it now? What height is it now? I can't say. Groin <laughs> height. <laughs> okay, more on the series of how to do fencing. Um, my idea is that when you're putting a fence like this on the side of a hill, it is kind of good to have the, the fence, the insulators on the downhill side rather than the post on the downhill side. So that if, for example, a horse or something came charging down the hill, and like burst through the fence it's kind of better that just smashes off a 25 cent insulator than kind of like snaps off your post does that make sense so okay so now we're going to use the post hole borer from the tool shed pretty happy with this 400 dollars post hole borer i mean all the handles are falling off which is pretty dumb but it's actually been super reliable and um yeah right so a post hole borer can't really um it gets all caught up if you try and go straight into grass so what i do is just dig a little kind of hole so i'll just figure out where we're going to do this so the hole the post is going to be there so i'll just uh, and we'll just generally have our posts 10 meters apart just because 10 is a nice decimal number and when you do the post hole board just always make sure that the um the cutting edge here hasn't got a big bit of kaku or something wrapped around it okay Put it on the hole. Okay, to use grass. And when you do um, the post, you know, you always have the posts 90 degrees to the hillside, unless they're hanging the gate. So the post is gonna go down kind of like that angle. So then you push the little bulb, push in the decompressor knob, figure out which way to stop. It has a choke, this one's a typical Chinese thing. Us, seems us about phase got on off but actually choke uh, that's choke when it says off that's choke on so you give it a pull That went surprisingly good too. If you hit a root or something, it often breaks your legs or arm because it kind of whacks you. What I was trying to say then is 
you don't push it down you just let it sp let it, the post sub bore do the work um, okay so then come home close now sign of a then you've got to clear the bottom now so what I do is I just push the clay away from the edge so it doesn't all fall back in my arm is is, is 600, 600 in the ground it's got to be so you've got to kind of clear the bottom of the hole so you have to be like a digger See, and just pull out those nice bit. Oh, Abby, can you grab a post, please? Right. That's kind of good. Oh, yeah. Just get the that's cool. So you stick that in the hole um, with the fat end down if there is a fat end. Since we, oh, oh. So we said that we're going to have the insulators on the downhill side, so we'll put the post like that, or like this. Actually, I kind of still want to, well basically you sort of, if you're doing professionally, you, know, you kind of want it so it just touches the wire neatly, okay? So kick a little bit in. Now my um, bore is a little bit um, too small for these posts. Or for this rammer, so I can't quite. I have to kind of really. Okay, it's not going completely according to plan because what I have to do is push the post up against one side of the hole, otherwise, the knob of my rammer thing won't go down. So, oh. why are you doing that? What's that? Um, I'm hoping and this is going to be like that. Um, put some down the front. I mean, why do you have to put dirt in there and then push it down? Well, they just fall out of the hole. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm trying to get, I'm trying to encourage you to say. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm glad that, you answered this question, hey? Thanks. Go. So answer the question. So, they should have kind of stuffed it up a little bit because, you know, my idea is that. What did you want me to say? Just that if you just like put the dirt in the hole and you don't ram it, it's not holding the post tight. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah, okay. That's it's, why you have to and ram. You're supposed to put a little bit and ram it, a little bit and ram it. <coughs> it wasn't a very good demonstration because the post doesn't end it up. To be honest, I'm actually even trying to bring this wire a little bit out from this course. Um, This is probably only a five out of ten if I was being marked. Um, <laughs> oh, another thing too is when you do this is um, try and keep your dirt close to your hole. I see a lot of people throw the dirt all over the place, and then they can't. Um, then it's a mission to get it all back to put in the hole. <sighs> all right. So Abby, you can grab a a hammer. A pinlock insulator and two staples, and we'll put a staple on there. Okay, I think we should do another video about putting a staple on. Yeah, okay. okay. Right, more, more in the <laughs> fencing series. Quite often, you want to tie a um, piece of, um, what's this stuff called? String? <laughs> Throwing it around, to I can't a, see it. To a wire, um, poly wire, to a wire. Now, there's obviously a hundred different ways you can do this, but we should all do it the same way, okay? Which is the same way that we tie the um, fenders onto the side of our boat. So it's, you take the poly white and you go over the top of the thing. Then you go over and you cross it over itself. It's basically a slip clove hitch. And then you put the end like that. Okay, and then that's a very good knot that is super easy to untie. Comprende? Okay. Slip clove hitch. So over the top and then just. Sweet. Okay, so don't, whatever you do, never tie a knot when you go like this, okay? Because those are super hard to untie, you know? All right? So now we got it, we're gonna tie this over to here. Oh, 
onto our um <laughs> this is onto our thing so you're gonna think what knot we're gonna use here so we'll put this through right through actually just pause for a second okay okay now the other thing here's now we're going to tie this into here blah 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 now there's a number of different right now you know if a bowline is kind of like a good one if you want to untie it so a bowline is you know this knot where you make a loop the rabbit comes out of the hole around the back of the tree and back down the hole okay and that makes a loop like that you can make a slip bowline so you can um where um okay the rabbit comes out around the back of the tree but then sticks his butt down the hole and leaves his head out okay like that and then that can be untied like like that blah 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 but also if you you know if you can't remember tie a bow and actually bow, tying a bow in is a whole another skill like alan said another option is just to tie a loop like this so this is a loop that you're not going to be able to untie in the future just you make a loop like that and put that in that like that now you can only really do that knot um uh you know at this end because because another situation you might be in is when you've okay now i've stuffed this up i oh, know not not quite yet is let's just say you're doing something where you know you um you want to pull it tight then you can't use a bowl and all you're not honey all right so just pull that tight a little bit abby without it so that, you know so let's just say now i want to um i want to you know i want to tie this off tight and i want to pull the string tight and then tie it uh -huh. now okay the knot that i do which would be great if everyone in the farm knew how to tie this knot is it's sort of like a trucker's hitch which is i go like this and like that wait so do that again sorry do that again because that was hard to say Okay, and then you tie. Actually, we can't really do it until we've got it, but I'll just I'll just do it here. So, a trucker's hitch is when you you make go like this and like that, and you make a little thingy like this. Yeah. And then you put your rope in there, and then so that, and then this is like then you can pull that tight. Okay, you pull it tight, Abby, and then when you've got it tight, you can then just do a little half hitch like that, and that will hold. 500 horses pushing on it. <laughs> well, you know. And when you want to undo it, boom, and boom, and magic. All right. But, okay, let's say you can't remember how to do that one. The other option, pull tight again, Abby, is around turn and two half hitches. So this would be where you go, um, you go, you know, you pull it tight, but then you go through again. This is getting a bit shitty. to crap okay so then so you pull it pull it pull it da, 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 da. and when you finally get it tight you then do a series of just half hitches you know like that and then you can do another half hitch like that with you know leaving trying to leave the end so you can <laughs> set up my nose all right practice in your own time but what we'll do for here we'll just do Alan's knot we do the because this is boom. because we're just going to make it tight on the other end. You're going to tighten up the other end. Yeah. I mean, what might happen is sometime in the future we want to tighten it down this end again. In which case, you know, say it's getting a bit loose, then we we'll have to pull this out, put this in, and you know, make a trucker's hitch. Sweet. But it would be good to teach everybody the trucker's hitch because it's a good idea. Handy. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to roll this up around here. Cut. And just to finish off our video, look at how a little bit about our regenerative agriculture. Look into there. I'll just go back a bit. So look. Uh, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Looking up into there, this is um, this was in grass when we came here. Obviously, you've got big tobacco weeds growing, but look at the ferns starting to come through. See a fern, 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 and ferns are the first step. I can see a, man, a tea tree there going there's a tea tree there and i'm pretty sure when we get up around the corner we'll walk in there and we'll see if we can find some little um tortoises mm.